Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Death Surely Die. Beloved family, our text says, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 11 to 15. The Day the Earth Stood Still is a science fiction movie first released in 1951. This fictional movie has powerful messages that correlates to our seed message today. King Jesus returned to earth as the Lamb of God to save earth from the sting of death. He came for the lost souls. But as in the movie, evil and wickedness had grown in the earth and death was reigning over men. Remember in Genesis when wickedness reigned and God sent the flood? Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 6, 5-8 But even before the height of this wickedness and rebellion in the earth, what started the decay of man was the disobedience to God in the garden. And this was the day death came alive. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. In other words, to manage it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. So death had no power over man as long as man did not disobey God and eat from the lone forbidden tree in the midst of the garden. Oh, but the serpent tempted them with something that they thought they needed. When God plainly said that they didn't. Oh, this is exactly what the Satan does to you and me today. He tempts us with things that we aren't supposed to have. That we think we need or we think is better than what we have. Paul figured this out. He said, not that I speak in regard to need. For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 11-13 Does this verse take on a new meaning for you? See, Paul understood that Satan comes to offer him what he doesn't have but thinks he needs. Okay, you need some more Bible for that. He tried the same thing on King Jesus Christ. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone 
but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And again, the devil took him up upon an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then King Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Matthew 4, 3 to 10. King Jesus teaches us to resist the devil and he will flee. If there is something that you think you need and don't have, it's hard to resist. If he offers that to you. But like Paul, if you know how to be content in all circumstances, then you can resist any temptation from the devil. This is why the commandment says, do not covet. Because you should be content with that which you already have. So when he comes to offer you something you already have, like a husband or a wife, you can tell him, get behind me, Satan. We have talked about the day death came alive. Now let's talk about our opening text. The one that should make us all shout, victory belongs to Jesus. Because there is a day death dies. Glory, hallelujah. The text says that death delivered up the dead who were in them. And then death was thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay, let's unpack this truth. If death has to give up the dead, and if death dies in Revelation, and it became alive in Genesis, that means death is a living spirit. It is a spirit that the Satan allows to take dominion over man. How? Oh, by the wages of sin. For indeed, that is what death is. It is the wages of sin and disobedience to God. Ah, uh -huh, family, we are about to get the truth, for the truth shall set us free. King Jesus Christ came to destroy the spirit of death by redepositing the spirit of life and truth, what Adam lost in the beginning. He is the truth and the life. His Holy Spirit left Adam in the beginning, and this allowed the spirit of death to come in. But King Jesus Christ conquered death by dying without sin and then being raised to life. This is important because death took Jesus illegally. Ah, oh, family, that's good if you can receive it. They killed King Jesus, but he had no sin. Death had no wages to legally kill him. Oh, so God says, oh, no, death, you messed up right there. Every other man on earth that sinned, death had a legal right to him, except the Son of Man, our Lord King Jesus Christ. So our Lord and King, conquer death and the grave. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord and King, Jesus Christ. Much love.